Hey everyone, in today's video we are talking all about consonant blends. I'm going to share some of my favorite ideas and strategies for teaching students how to not only decode words with consonant blends in them, but also for them to listen to those phonemes they hear in each of the words. I have a few activities and freebies that I think you are going to like. So if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones, and if you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. If you are ready to dive in, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Now I do want to let you know that I have done videos like this in the past for how to teach CVC words as well as how to teach digraphs. So I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on those videos and I wanted to continue making kind of a series like this and today we're focusing on those consonant blends. Now a consonant blend is of course when there are two consonants together, sometimes it's called a consonant cluster. I've always referred to it as a blend so I will continue to do that in this video. But a consonant blend comes either before or after the vowel in the word. So you might have the word like spin and you have that sp, sp, sp before the i. You also might have a word like clasp. There we have two consonant blends. We have cl, the cl at the beginning, a in the middle, and then sp at the end. Now when I am teaching students what consonant blends are, sometimes I might kick off this type of lesson and just go ahead and explicitly teach them what a consonant blend is, but other times I like to use concept attainment slides. Now I talked about this in my digraphs video, but a concept attainment slide is basically something that looks like this. So these slides are a great warm up for this type of activity because students are really using their phonemic awareness skills to determine what is the rule. Now in order for something to be the rule, it would be in the thumbs up side and all of those images over there would have to follow the same rule. And in the thumbs down side, none of them could follow this rule. Now if you take a close look at this picture, I would tell students, I'd display this for them, and I would ask them, okay, I'm going to say some of these words. I want you to listen carefully to them and determine what's the same about those ones in the thumbs up side. And how do they differ from ones in the thumbs down side? So over here we have space, spoon, spot, spider, sponge, and spaghetti. And in the downside we have star, skate, s'more, swan, snake, and sloth. Now I have this type of slide included in a whole unit. So students, if you're using something like this, you can definitely use it on its own, that one slide that I just shared. But I have, at this point, students have kind of figured out that they're listening for the sounds at the beginning, middle, or end of the word. Um, to determine you know what the rule is and what the rule isn't so my students would have i guess a leg up you could say on guessing this rule but if this is your first time using a slide like this you can just coach them and say i want you to listen to the beginning of the words here and determine what's different now in a slide like this one it's a little trickier because all of the words actually start with s so we need to go one step further which i love we need to listen to that second sound Again, this is a great intro into that consonant blend. There are two sounds there. Then your students can listen in again and hopefully figure out that the rule is everything in the thumbs up side has the blend SP at the beginning, or at least the sounds SP. They might not know that terminology of consonant blend yet. After showing a slide like that one, that would kind of be my introduction into teaching students about consonant blends. I would explain to them that yes, all of those words actually had an S at the beginning, but even more so they had something we call a consonant blend. And that is when we have two consonants together and you can still hear both of their sounds. Now, generally speaking, I teach consonant blends after I teach digraphs. So I would relate the two and explain that, remember when we learned about the digraph SH and those are two letters that make a new sound. Well, here we have two letters and we're gonna actually still hear each of their sounds. They don't lose any sounds, they don't make a new sound. So I would definitely compare the two. After explaining what a blend is, I would actually have students go ahead and tap out the different sounds they hear in some consonant blend words. Now, if you used a what's the rule slide like the one I just shared, you can use those exact words um, and you can use them from both sides because they all have blends, so sloth. Let's tap out the sounds we hear in sloth. S, l, a, th, 
four sounds. What about space? S, p, a, s. Again, four sounds. And I would point out again that you can still hear both sounds in that blend. Now, if you don't have access to the what's the rule slides or you want to go ahead and kick off this lesson in a different way, I would explicitly teach what a consonant blend is, tell students you're going to be working on reading and writing and listening to words with blends, and then I would use just some images. So you could find a space image, star, spider, and find some words with consonant blends and do the same thing where students are listening for the sounds and tapping them out. By the way, those What's the Rule slides are included in my SJT Literacy Club, and they are also on TPT, so I will link them down in the description if you want to try them. Okay, so those first steps are going to be to introduce exactly what a consonant blend is, and then also to have students listen to and tap out the sounds they hear in different words with consonant blends. Now, I had students tapping out the sounds on their fingers. You can have students do that, but you can also give them sound boxes. You can give them Play-Doh, little counters. They can just tap the sounds on the sound boxes on a sheet of paper. However you want to do it is fine, but the first two steps usually include explicitly teaching the skill and practicing those sounds before we actually get to the letters. So after you've done that, it is time to introduce those graphemes, introduce the letters that make those sounds. Now, thank Hopefully with consonant blends, since they retain their sound, you don't need to teach them each and every different blend that they might come across, unlike a digraph. Students will have to learn when they see SH together, it makes SH. Here, students are still blending the exact consonant sound they already learned for each individual consonant, so you don't have to teach them to, you know, memorize any of those sounds. However, I do like to teach them about the three different types of blends they will come across while they're reading, just so they can keep their eyes out for it and be a little bit more cognizant when they're reading. So this is when I teach them about S blends, R blends, and L blends. Now I teach my students that they might hear an S blend at the beginning or the end of a word, and and an S blend simply has an S first before the other consonant. Think about, in our example, the word space, or at the end of a word, clasp. And then with L and R blends, those are ones that have an L or an R as the second consonant in the blend. Think of the word frog or drink. They have DR and FR as an R blend. Or for L blends, we have the word planet with a PL at the beginning, or the word flower, FL at the beginning. Now, S blends, R blends, and L blends are not the only consonant blends students will come across as they are reading. For example, I'm thinking of the word gift, and that has that FT at the end there. But I do like to teach students that these are the most common ones, again, just so they're a little more cognizant as they're reading of the different types of words and sounds that they will read. After I've gone through the different types of blends students might see, I like to actually show them some examples and have them practice blending those sounds to make words. Now, I like to do this using successive blending, and I have shared this strategy in a few of my videos before, I think most recently my decoding strategies video right here. But essentially with that, let's think of the word step. I will show students that word on the board. I will have them identify where the blend is. They will see S and T. And then I show students that we will blend that sound first. So they will first blend S, T, S, T. And I usually do a little swoop underneath the S, T. Then we will look at the E, S, T, E, S, T. So they have that next, and then they'll do S, T, P, S, T. That way they're individually blending each different sound to carry it on and just add the new phoneme at the end. Then we'll practice blending a few more words all together with some L blends and some R blends like frog and flap. And again, we'll do it with that successive blending. Once students practice that with you, I like to go ahead and have them practice it themselves. And I actually have these free blend cards right here. I shared them a couple years ago on my channel, but I wanted to share them again. And these blend cards already have the little swoop underneath the blend first, so students can recognize it. I do suggest printing the blends cards on a different color paper, again, just so students are aware of that blend. And then they can practice on their own, putting the cards together to make either real or nonsense words, and they will have to decode it to figure out if it is real or nonsense. 
I will go ahead and link those down in the description too so you can grab them for your own students. Once students have had plenty of practice decoding those individual words, I like to move to what's next naturally, which would be to have them decode some sentences. Now you can find lots of decodable texts online, but I also have these one page decodable interventions that I absolutely love. Here is one that I would have for S blends. And what I like about these is it has students working from the top down to the bottom and getting increasingly harder each time. So up here, you see four different blends that they can practice and then students go into decoding the actual words with those blends and then they have sentences to read with those words the slug is on the stem she has a big spot on her skin and Steph swam in the still pond. There's also a spot for students to practice encoding or writing words with S blends in them. And then of course, to show comprehension, I like them to illustrate one of the sentences that they read above. Now I have a ton of different practice sheets for students to use in my one page decodable unit. It looks like this over on TPT. It is also included in the SGT Literacy Club, just so you know, it's in the bonus section. And then if you are pulling a small group during this time, I also have these teacher sheets for each individual skill in the bundle. So this example is S blends. Here you can see I have a little focus image students can look at. They have star, snake, and spider with some examples of S blends they might hear. And then I have a list of thumbs up and thumbs down words. And for those, I would just ask students to listen to each word and they have to tell me if they hear an S blend in the word. So I would randomly choose some of those different words. They would give me a thumbs up if they hear an S blend or a thumbs down if they don't. And then this little list right here with the three yellow dots, these are some words that they can go ahead and segment. So those represent little counters. If you wanna give them some sound boxes, they can do the words stop, swim, snip, and scab. And then the ABC part over here is an example word ladder you might wanna use with them where students are switching out one individual sound at a time to make a new word, all with S blends. Again, that's a little cheat sheet for your small groups. So if you have students that are struggling decoding words with blends in them, those just give you a few examples of activities and some word lists that you can use with your students before they dive into that one page decodable. Okay, we have explicitly taught the skill. We have had students tap out and listen to different phonemes that they hear in different words with consonant blends. We have had students decode words with consonant blends. Make sure when you're doing that, again, you're doing it at the beginning beginning and at the end of sounds because they will see both. And step number four, we have had students actually decode sentences with those words in it. So what is step number five? If you've been following me for a while, you already know. Step five is review and I love to review and practice this over and over using games. Naturally, with most of your students, you don't get to walk through all four of those steps and then just have it be done and now they can decode every single word they read with consonant blends. They usually need to review it and practice this over over and over and over. And a fun phonics game is the perfect way to keep students both engaged and also to have them effectively practicing these skills. So let me share some of my favorite games with you. The first two I'm gonna share are from my Consonant Blends print and play pack. It looks like this over on TPT. In this unit, there are six different games. I'm just gonna show you two of my favorite. Here is the first one I love. It is called Roll Complete in Color. And here students will go ahead and roll two dice, find the sum, and then they will find the matching number on their side. So there's player one and player two. And I like this one because here students aren't decoding the whole word. They're using the image and their phonemic awareness skills to identify what that beginning blend is. So here you can see player one rolled a four and their word is pretzel. Now they don't need to worry about spelling pretzel. They will simply look at the image there. They will look at the rest of the word and they have to listen for that beginning blend. Per what two letters do they hear there? And they'll write down P and R and then color in the pretzel. And then student two can go, let's pretend they got that 10 down there for star. Again, they see the image, they see the rest of the word, and they have to listen for those two sounds, that consonant blend they hear at the beginning. Another game I love from this unit is this one right here. It is called Spin and Find the Blend. And here students will actually spin a paper clip and they will have to land on either R blend, S blend, or L blend. 
again using those phonemic awareness skills, they will need to look in this grid here and they will find an image that starts with one of those. So they have to really isolate that blend and think to themselves, is this an S blend, an L blend, or an R blend? And if this is a two player game, students will each have two different color crayons and they will color back and forth until either the time is up or all the images are colored in and you can see who wins. Now, like I said, that's just two of six different games I have in that unit, but I also have another free one that I've offered on my blog for a long time, so I thought I would share that here. And this game is called Blend It. This is another two player game, but students can also play it independently. And here they will get a spinner that they will go ahead and spin. It will land on a different blend that they will have to go ahead and put in their mouth first. So I always tell them, put that blend in. It's kind of like that successive blending. So if they landed on SW, they would already have sw, sw in their head. And then they will need to go ahead and find in the grid a word that they can put SW in front of to make a real word. When they find that, they can go ahead and cover it with a cube and students will go back and forth again until either the time is up or until that whole grid is covered and see who wins. So there you have a bunch of different strategies, ideas, and activities, and you got to see how I would really teach my students all about consonant blends. Now, I think this was obvious, but I do wanna state that I would not do all of these in one day. That would be probably pretty overwhelming and an extremely long phonics lesson. So these type of strategies and activities are something I would do throughout the week. So I'd probably kick it off with a what's the rule in some blend blending practice, um, and then I may have time to go into decoding individual words on that day. The next day we would go ahead and review individual words, go into decodable sentences, and then the games are something we would use throughout the week just to continue reviewing. All the materials and freebies I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That bell lets you know every single time I upload a video to my channel, which right now I do every Thursday and Sunday morning. See you in the next one. Bye.